Okay, I think we're gonna start. I think uh, like people will jump in uh, when we are on the way. Uh, so first, I want to say hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us. It's very cool to be here. I'm Vlad, your MC for today. Seth uh, is our DJ community manager, um, making all things work smoothly. I want to thank the team, Marina, Polto, Thiago, and the others for helping me in the preparation. And I want to thank Dapnode, and especially Lansky, otherwise called Polanski, uh, that joined us today to talk about decentralization. Uh, the occasion is that we uh, now are available as a package on the DAP node, allowing uh, anyone to deploy a node, full node, very easily, and contributing to the decentralization of the network, of Alephium network. And uh, all that is thanks to DAP node, which is an association company that we love. Um, it works to decentralize the world of crypto one node at a time. So thank you, Lansky, to be here with us. Uh, you're going to talk to us a little bit for uh, make us a presentation, show us a bit how it works, and then we'll have some questions. People, uh, please uh, mute yourselves when you're not talking. Uh, if you have questions, you can write them in the chat, and we will ask them at the end of the presentation. Um, so it's really, I think, without further ado, we can just go. Floor is yours, Lansky. Thank you. Okay, fantastic. Oh, this a, that was a great, uh, a great short intro to to that note. I think I'm uh, I'm gonna try to get you on our community calls. And <laughs> you do the MCing. You're doing great. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for this amazing introduction. Um, and and yeah, everything that you said is is absolutely true. That note is a decentralized first project and. Uh, it's mostly free open source software that um, that we use or that we provide to people um, in order to make the centralized infrastructure easy for everybody. So the objective is that in five, eight years, um, everybody will be able to participate on hosting the infrastructure for the projects that they love, regardless of their technical ability. It doesn't matter if you're an expert. It doesn't matter if you are technical, if you are not. Um, it is uh, everybody should be able to to run nodes of the blockchains that they use or even of the systems that they use. Like, let's say that packages that are not blockchain, like your own cloud, um, next clouds or uh, any other services that you want, like a, a pie hole for advertising, um, all of this, which is kind of like reserved for technical people or people that want to spend some time should be really plug and play. Um, so yeah, this is Dabnote and it was actually born in 2017 out of a huge censorship problem that we had in Spain. So there was, um, uh, there was a campaign for Catalonia, which is a region in Spain, um, to to vote for being independent, to vote for independent for independency from the rest of Spain, and it was just a referendum. It was non-binding, um, and the government cracked down hardcore on it, and it cracked down hardcore to the ISP level. Um, so it basically went to ISPs and said, so the internet service providers, and said, hey, those websites do not serve them. Just do not serve them. Just block them. Nobody can access this. And that was really funny in 2017 that a government in Spain, not we're not talking about Iran or we're not talking about um, any other country, for something that was not illegal, for something that was not, it just simply, it just couldn't happen. That was hardcore censorship. Um, and Jordi by Lina, which is one of the founders of that note, uh, was like, hey, I don't, I don't want any censorship, and I can deploy all of these websites on uh, IPFS, and they will be available forever for everyone, just like that. And he did. And then obviously, nobody could access them anyway. 
because at that point, IPFS, which is uh, the centralized storage system, um, was not, um, there was no uh, gateways or open portals like, like we, have, we have now. So it was like, wow, okay, I deployed this on IPFS, I did all this work, um, but still people cannot access it. Why? Because people don't know how to run IPFS nodes. And here was where one of the first seeds of that node was like, oh, we should make it super easy for people to be able to spin up a node of wherever we want, IPFS, Ethereum, Alephium, Bitcoin, um, just a couple of clicks and boom. Uh, no need for technical knowledge, no need for anything. Private, in your own machine, completely uncensorable. Um, and that's also, that's, and that's, that has a dual purpose. That has one purpose, it is good for the user. The user can access any sort of the centralized services at a node level without any type of censorship. So it can interact directly with the node. If you connect to the RPC endpoint of any node, you can send transactions, you can, set, you can check the blockchain yourself, you, can, you depend on, no, on nothing, you depend on no third party that provides the node. So that's really good for the user. But it also has like a very interesting side effect for the networks themselves. When we run a node for us, when we run a node, we're actually helping the centralize this network. We're actually helping uh, increase the amount of nodes and increase the resilience of the networks that we run um, by one more node. And how exactly are we are we helping uh, increase the resilience of these nodes? Um, well. Let's imagine that these nodes, there's like one node of your blockchain. It's really easy to, to turn down, right? It's really easy to, um, to attack. You just need to find its IP, do a DDoS attack, boom, there's no blockchain anymore. If there's two of them, that's good. Like that's, that's double the decentralization, but you can still turn it down. Um, and here we start getting into more realistic scenarios where there's blockchains that have a lot of nodes, but they're all controlled by a foundation or by... A, a company that uses this. And if this company is targeted by the authorities and say, hey, you need to shut down those nodes because they, these nodes have become illegal in this particular jurisdiction, well, companies, since they are legal entities and they don't want to get in trouble, they will have to do that. Um, so you can target, basically, there's, there's blockchains or there's the distributed systems that you can target just by pointing at one company and forcing it to shut down their nodes. Uh, same thing happens for the nodes that are provided in uh, cloud services, in AWS, in Hetzner, in OVA, uh, OVH. Um, all of these, um, they can be... So very recently, Hetzner, uh, which is one of the biggest cloud providers in Europe, just declared that it was against its terms of service to run uh, Ethereum nodes. Um, to run Ethereum nodes, anything related to mining at all. Um, so basically what they did is they, they declared it illegal. And if they discover that you are using their virtual server for running any particular nodes, they'll just shut it down. No explanations needed. They'll just shut you down. Okay. You're without system. You cannot run it anymore. Um, okay. So when you're running one of these nodes in your own home on your internet, you can't be censored like this. It's a lot harder. And if it's an army of us, if it's a few of us, if it's thousands of us even that are running these nodes, me in Spain, somebody else in Switzerland, somebody else in Nigeria, somebody else in Japan, somebody else in Germany, somebody else in anywhere else, well, you, you tell me how you turn this network down. You can't. It's a lot, a lot harder. So this is where the importance, this is where DAP node is so focused on decentralization because no matter what network no matter what network we prefer we like to run we want to use um if we don't manage to get infrastructure level decentralization these networks might succeed but they will never be resilient they there's always the chance that they will be turned out okay so after this uh this introduction um, let me show you guys uh, a little bit more about Dapnode, right? Da -da -da -da. I'm going to share screen. And I guess as you guys are seeing my screen, get some confirmation. 
Cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I see some heads yeah. nodding. Perfect. Beautiful. So, um, so that nodes is free open source software that you can install in any machine and you can run any decentralized network. Um, the idea is that there are some networks that give you rewards for this. Uh, so basically, that node, sort of like the objective is that it might even pay for itself. And if it doesn't do right now, it might do in the future. Um, because running infrastructure is key. Um, and it's, it's the key for this, the networks to, to succeed. So how do we do that? Well, um, we'll see a, a, an easier example now. Um, but let's just say that we have two ways of getting your hands on Dabnode, the free open source software. So you can basically, there's two ways. You can choose to download Dabnode core in your machine. And this was always, this will always be free. This is completely open source. You can go to GitHub, uh, github.com slash Dabnode, and you'll find our repository. All of our code is GPL3 um, and open source. So um, anybody can uh, install it in their machine, and they will turn their machine in what we will see later. The other option is you can buy a plug and play machine. You can buy a plug and play um, uh, hardware from our store that it comes pre-installed with Dabnode itself. I'm going to show you some of these machines. So some of you that are in Switzerland might know Hopper. It's also a project based in Switzerland. Um, so we have a special edition with Hopper. It's a customized piece of hardware with an aluminum lid with the Hopper logo, et cetera. And it comes with 960 Hopper tokens. Um, the, then there's like different versions. Uh, 64 gigabytes uh, of RAM, 32 gigabytes of RAM, et cetera, et cetera. So um, those are the machines, but let's, how about the software? What, why, would you, why would we buy this machine? Like what, what, is, what is Dabnode? It's free open source software, it turns into a machine. Let's see what it is exactly. So this is Dabnode. This is what you, like, so when you install this into a machine, it'll give you this dashboard. And the idea is that you can do anything you want without any command line. The key here is a little bit the Dab Store. And here you can see all the packages that you can install. Among them, you can install the Alephium package, um, which is what we're introducing today. I'm going to show you that, guys, right now. Um, you can install all of these packages. You can install Bitcoin. You can install Zcash. You can install Ethereum Classic. You can install uh, normal Ethereum. You can install things that, are, that have nothing to do with blockchain, like Rotkey. Rotkey is like an, an accounting tool for okay for for crypto, but OwnCloud does not have anything to do with um, with uh, uh, blockchain. It's basically to turn. It will turn your Dabnode, your machine, your physical machine where you have installed Dabnode, it will uh, turn it into a little cloud server as well. Um, it has Mysterium, which is a VPN, Hopper, Mixnet. Like, it has a whole suite of things, right? And anybody, because this is free and open source, we have an SDK. So if you guys have a project, you can create a package for, for this as well. Um, so one of these packages here is a Lefium. And here's the packages that we have installed in this machine, for example. So let's see, let's look a little bit on what the Alephium package is. The Alephium package is um, an Alephium node. So anybody can run a node. And as we say, this is important because decentralization is important for network resilience. And it also has a little bonus. So when we install it, we can choose to disable the local chain explorer or to enable the local chain explorer, which means that apart from running a node and giving you an endpoint where you can connect your wallet and you can start doing transactions directly from your node without any third parties that can spy on you, that can check on who's sending the transactions, that can just simply like log this information, which IP is connecting to this and which sort of transactions are they doing. If you have your own node, if you connect to your own node, this is impossible. So if I click this link, you'll see that that's actually not a website. That's actually not a website at all. This is an endpoint. This is to send transactions, OK? Um, and to do queries, and if you know how to interact with the node. So basically, if you plug it to your wallet, that's how, that's how it will work. And what we said here, we can also have a local chain explorer. So this is actually really amazing. And this is what I love about this. Um, so this is syncing. 
the node is syncing, and we can say we can see it here. We can say that the node is syncing. We can see that the logs section on the on the package. The node is syncing, and therefore we're still a little bit behind on the explorer. We're like ten months behind, but. I think it's super cool to see it being updating in, in real time. You can see this local node explorer, which is reading from your own node. Well, it's actually reading from a database that is taken from your own node. But here, you're not connecting to any third parties. You're not connecting to um, any block explorers. This is local. This is hosted in your own DAP nodes. And you can check for your addresses here for whatever it is, et cetera, et cetera. And you can look at the, at the, at the blogs. You can check. Um, the transactions, et cetera, et cetera. So here we go. This is a, a fully functional block explorer self-hosted in your own machine. And now you'll say, like, if this is so cool, why is it? Uh, why does it give you the possibility to enable or disable? Well, because the indexing of this data is actually quite heavy. And it will occupy a fair amount of gigabytes, um, but, uh, but it should be fine. Um, if you want it to be a little bit slimmer, uh, you just get your own node and you can still interact. You don't need the Explorer to interact with your own node to send transactions, et cetera, et cetera. One last thing that you can do with the LFU package is you have this dashboard for monitoring, which is in the DMS package. The DMS is something um, specific for DAP node which is called, that DMS stands for DAP Node Monitoring Service. And it's basically, it gives you like um, uh, uh, an interface or like a framework for any of the packages that are here. They can connect to it and have like an easy way to display any metrics at all. This is really cool if you're a developer. And it is even cooler if you are not a developer because you get all of this data that is served to you in like a framework that you don't need anything in particular. Um, to to make it work, right? So here we can see our LFU node, which has 16 peers. It's been up for 41 minutes. There you can see the start time. Everything looks good. Number of this number, total transaction count, which still not synced, so you will not see the transaction counts, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, we'll see the download speed here that we're getting uh, from the rest of the nodes, um, and we have all of these metrics for. The uh, for the chain validation as well. Um, let's let's remember that this is not completely synced yet. So voila, or is it? Current block height, total blocks. Maybe it is. Voila. Um, so this is. So this is the um, so this is the uh, the Alephium package that uh, we've got. We have also have here, I don't want to stop this. I don't want to take any credit for this, because in the call today, we have M. Garciate, which is the person that has done pretty much all the legwork for this package. Like He's been like working on this package, which is honestly one of the most polished packages that we have in, in Dabnode. The fact that it has so many options, the option to have a database or not. It has the explorer. It has the endpoint. It has a, a package here. Uh, it has all the... Um, uh, it, it has some troubleshooting included here. Like, honestly, like he's done such an amazing job on making sure that this was extremely, extremely easy to use. Um, that, yeah, um, please, big round of applause, even if you're muted. Um, please give a big round of applause to uh, M. Garciate, who has been like working like crazy to make this one of the best packages that we have on the Dabnode store right now in terms of how polished and well done it is. Excellent. So I think that's a, that's a little bit my presentation. We're getting to a 20 minutes. Um, I can run you through Dabnode a little bit more if you want to know more. I can run you through the package if you want to know more. Uh, to through the metrics, whatever you guys want. Let's give it up to the Q and A. Thank you, Lansky. Wow, I've never had like someone finish in exactly the time that we discussed it before. So thank you for that. That's a very Swiss thing to do. <laughs> so this was perfect. Actually, we love this presentation. Uh, thanks for to M Garciate for the neat integration. Like, it looks really good. Honestly, like um, for those of us who are a little bit less technical, 
uh, this was very well uh, understandable. Uh, so, so thanks a lot. I, we have a, I have a few questions. Like first, just personally, like, are you of a technical training yourself? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm. I come from the business from a business background. I have an MBA. Um, worked as a consultant. Um, uh, et voila, and then got enamorated by crypto. I started crypto mining Dogecoin back in 2014, I think it was. Six long time ago um <laughs> like all, all roads and... need to decentralization right you can start at mining those yeah, cars exactly and then they can, like, <laughs> with the mission of decentralizing the world like i love that i love that uh, do you have a few um is it possible to know how many dap node packages are actually running in general like not only for lithium like in general do you have a uh, any idea of that this is a really good question and the answer is no we don't know how many nodes and how many packages are there. And this is usually how the first question that any venture capital um, that wants to do things like, well, Dabner is such a cool idea. Uh, how many DAP nodes do you have? And we're like, we don't know. And we don't want to know. DAP node includes no telemetry at all. It includes nothing that calls home. Basically, the DAP store here is not served by any service that we provide and any server that we have. This is actually a smart contract in the Ethereum chain. It's a smart contract in the Ethereum chain, so I'm basically connecting to the Ethereum network. And I do, in this DAP node, I do not have a full Ethereum node, so I'm connecting to a third-party node. But I have the possibility, when I go to here repository, I have the possibility to go and have my own full Ethereum node. So basically, I don't need to connect to any remote uh, third party to, to read the smart contract and to, and to see what packages are available. Same same way, um, when you actually so this is to to see what packages are available, and in order to um, download those packages, those are basically Docker images. What we're running here, everything that you see here, those are Docker images. And to download these Docker images, you get them from IPFS. IPFS, the distributed um, uh, file system. Um, it is also you have a we have a node, we have a local node that I connect to. So basically, I am connected to a peer-to-peer -peer network where I can go and download this from other IPFS nodes into my IPFS node. And then from my IPFS node, I download it to my system and, uh, and install it. So uh, everything, you can be fully, this, this is a testing node. So I am actually connecting to a to, to read the, the Ethereum network, um, to read the smart contract, I'm connecting to a, to a node that we maintain. Um, but most people will be running their own full nodes. And in oh. this case, we have no idea, no idea um, who's running that nodes. And this is very important for us uh, in principle and by design, because we don't want to have any information. We want to give the user full privacy on, uh, on, what, they, that's, that's, on what they want to show us. That's awesome. I didn't ask as a, as a venture capitalist would, I asked, because I was curious if we can measure decentralization, because as you know, this is a complicated uh, issue. Um, about that, uh, you mentioned to be the decentralization at the infrastructural level. And you say like, like the good ones will need for being, to be resilient, they will need to be decentralized as the infrastructure level. And we can see that with the legal issues that are arising around Ethereum and the nodes being in the US and stuff like this. So. Uh, I, I just ask you the question, like in your appreciation, which of the blockchains do you consider decentralized enough at the infrastructural level? Do you do you see a lot of these? Yeah, so um, this is a really good question. And I would say still the most decentralized um, in terms of access is Bitcoin for sure. Um, it's the one that has the most nodes um, for uh, for that that are that are used actually for for just accessing and, and maintaining the information. But here we need to. I'm, I'm sorry. We need to introduce a little bit of complexity here, and we need to introduce the validation or the block creation as well, which is another aspect that is a particular type of decentralization as well. And, and here we're starting to see that uh, proof of stake networks are actually 
um, have the potential to be very, very decentralized as well uh, on the validation. But this is, so I, I don't want to go into, into too much of a tangent here. What, what we're going to say is that um, we should separate the network decentralization um, and then the, uh, the block production decentralization. Yeah. So honestly, production decentralization is not that important at a consensus level because if there is one, two, three, if there's with a very few number of honest consensus abiding validators, we can have, we can secure the network and we can keep producing blocks. We can keep producing not blocks for any network, be it proof of work, proof of stake, it doesn't really matter. So I'm not going to go into this um, because we're moving into a space where block production will be more and more centralized because you know MEV opportunities between uh, cross-chain MEV opportunities, what who decides what goes into the block and how can I profit for this, especially if I know that in another chain there's going to be another transaction happening and included in the same block. How can I arbitrage between these two? Um, it's a it's a it's a super complex world. We're still it's still so early and so infant, um, uh, but it's but it's pushing it's pushing the architecture of blockchains towards uh, towards a more towards a, a place where the decentralization of block production is going to be less and less relevant. But the validation of such blocks, the validation of such blocks which is checking that everything is consensus abiding, that everything is, is correct. This is, this is what matters, right? And here um, is where we have all these, um, where it would matter to run a full node because a full, a full node validates all the chain and it will kick out um, any other node that is not, uh, that is not um, uh, mm -hmm. abiding to the consensus laws. So going back to your question, um, it's very hard to put metrics on that, but let's say that on the validation of the network, Ethereum is pretty good. Um, I have serious doubts about censorship on Ethereum, um, which is a different topic because you can have completely decentralized block production and validation, but actually the on the block production you're just censoring blocks but anyway that's that's a separate idea let's say it let's say there's a fuck ton of ethereum nodes out there a fuck ton and the fact that uh, it's a pos um pos chain helps because you need to run your full node in order to be able to earn money from it and that's always a big incentive to run a node right so if you pay money or if if people need to run a full node to get paid then of course you a lot of people will be running nodes um gnosis chain as well uh, Bitcoin as well, and I don't know if you guys have some metrics on the on on how many nodes Alephium nodes. I hope that after today, there's going to be a, a lot more yeah. uh, Alephium nodes out there. I think I think uh, we we have some idea. I think Palto is already answering that question <laughs> okay. because for us, like the decentralization uh, from the beginning, it has been a very key and important uh, objective for for us. And like I'm, I'm really interested in understanding like where is that node today? Because you, you on one hand you sell uh, uh, hardware, right? For this, I guess you have data. I'm not asking you, but like oh, I yeah, guess yeah, yeah. it gives you a, an idea already on how many DAP nodes in terms of the boxes are, are running out mm -hmm. there. I think you've sold, mm -hmm. uh, and then there's a. Uh, you, you you said it very clearly. It came out of a political state uh, problem, right? Like you were censored uh, in Catalonia. Uh, so, uh, how do you keep going those two things together? You have to be profitable uh, to be able to make new packages, expand the offer, uh, make the tool even yeah. better and easier to use. Uh, at the same time, you want to keep the mission alive. So, how do you deal with these uh, two conflicting uh, issues? Let's say. Yeah. So our main our main concern is to always be free and open source, um, and our main product is the software. The software is, is always going to be free and open source. Why? Because everybody, no matter where you're at, no matter whether you can afford one of our boxes or not, you should be able to just download this in any machine that you have hacked together that you've borrowed from your grandma, and you should be able to install it and be able to run whatever you want. This is like sort of our vision, um, and then everything else is things that we have to do to keep this vision alive. 
And one of the things that we had to do is to start ha sell hardware. So when we're selling hardware, um, I'm going to tell you right now, selling hardware does not, it, it's not worth it. It um, does not pay for the development of the entire uh, DAB node ecosystem. Um, uh, uh, but then uh, obviously we are starting to grow in, in numbers and in popularity. Um, and even though we do not know the exact number, um, there's a lot of prominent uh, figures that, that run uh, DAMs. For example, one of the validators of, uh, one of the Vitalik validators, the founder of Ethereum, um, was his graffiti was validating on DAP node, which is the default graffiti that that you get when you when you run a validator on on this. So even Vitalik is running a DAP node, right? That's cool. um, so so yeah, um, the, we get a lot of grants. We get a lot, basically grants uh, partnering with foundations, partnering with people that want to um, uh, the centralized networks that want to like be out there. Um, we we got an Alephium grant as well um, in order to make this this package. Um, thank you so much, guys, for for your help. Um, and and yeah, we get we get grants of varying sizes to do custom development. Um, by the way, you don't need to you don't need any permission from us to create an Alephium package or any package that you want. Everything we have an SDK and it's open source, and you can use the SDK. And if you can Dockerize your your project, you can turn it into a DAPNOT package. Um, but if you want us to do it, if you yeah. want M. Garciate, who's a fucking genius, to, to do it and make it super nice and twinkly for you, um, that's also a service that we provide and we keep sustaining ourselves like this. And it is, it is okay. We have a lot of runway. Um, we are, we are longstanding. Um, a lot of people ask me because they, they run validators on that note and they, they'll tell me like, but how do I know that you're not going to disappear tomorrow and my validator is going to be like without maintenance? Um, don't worry about this. We have a lot of runway. Um, we are well funded at, at this point. That's cool. Like about, about the, the fact that anyone can deploy a package. How, how do you, how can one make sure that, uh, the package I'm about to download is not malicious? Uh, really I mean? good question. I love that you asked me this. Excellent. Um, okay. So I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you here when you go to the DAP store. Um, all of these packages are vetted by us. You oh. cannot put a package here that we have not checked that the source code the source code is good. Um, so you will see this little tick. These but are the, the packages that have been. The optimism, for example, doesn't have it. Doesn't have it exactly um, because the optimism package it has been vetted by us. We have checked the source code and we know the person. And this person has gotten a. Um, a grant in order to maintain this package. And we have met this person and we've seen the code and we are in touch with this person. There's a commit strong commitment to maintaining this, this node, et cetera, and therefore it is here. But let's say that you just you're just messing around. Um, there's this little button here, public repository, where you mm -hmm. can access the repositories of yeah. Um, the repository of like that everybody can can uh, where everybody can update their packages. Oh no, it's not loaded. Um, I haven't used it. Oh, it, you'll need to scan a little bit of uh, the chain right now. But I can show you something else. Here you go. Um, we have this explorer.dabno.io, and you can see all the packages that people are are creating. All those mm. that say uh, like for example, dshackle, dshackle. Um, the shackle is a community package. I don't even know what it does. Um, QBT, also a community package. All of these are in the public repository. And you can always go to the public repository and download any of this, right? Okay. Now, this, you need to know who the developer is if you want to trust them. Yeah. You need to know who did the, the Arbitrum Nitro package. Well, you need to know if you want to, if you want to trust them. Claire's data pinner. Okay. I didn't even know we, we had this. You know, it's cool. Um, and... is, there, is there like a page with comments and stuff like this? No, like there is the not. But if you, okay. but if you know and trust the the person, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. uh da -da, one second. Uh, 
Ah, here we go. Um, so if you know uh, who does the who does the package, the package are signed, are cryptographically signed by uh, by the by the the addresses of their owners. So if you add for a particular package, you add their address, the address that should submit it, they, you will never be fooled once you, and, and you will always be, um, you will only download uh, packages that come from the uh, address of the person that you trust. So here, for example, on the optimism guy, uh, I could get his address, the address where he published he published this, um, and I would be able to uh, from the address, oh, yeah. I would take it from here, and I would be able to always trust uh, his packages, right? Okay. Or, so it, oh, yeah, okay. The key is like actually the, the public Ethereum address from, for deployment. Yes, oh, exactly. Cool. Exactly. So there's not a comments system yet, not on the Dapp Store, um, but that could be a cool addition to to the future. Um, obviously, you can go to our Discord, and there's lots of um, like people asking for help for building packages, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, that you can ask whether there's sort of like the, the social layer happens in our Discord right now. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So actually, that answers the next question I had. Is that uh, you're not like like if I'm very being very paranoid. Uh, you 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 can't like resist to a DNS attack. But in fact, with the signing of the Ethereum address, then you might be. Because I have a way of yeah. checking. It, they the, need to be signed exactly. They need to be cryptographically signed by the um, by the the right user. Okay, that's by the that's right awesome. person. Yeah, really mm -hmm. awesome. Um, uh, so here, for example, I could already just optimism.public.dabno.eth. Let's add the key because I know this guy. Okay, sorry, no, that's not the key. It's the here we go. And now for all the updates that he does on this address, I will be. And I, you can choose to trust all of his packages that are in the public repository. If I do yeah. public .dabno.eth, or you can choose to only trust the optimism package. That's cool. Yeah, and you submit the key, empty key name. Sorry. Uh, voila. And here we go. Now I will be trusting his package, his optimism package. Uh, every time, and I will not get any um, any uh, me error messages. So if it if it finds a package that is not signed like this, mm -hmm. it will give you an error message. It will give you a message saying this is not signed. Uh, do you want to bypass or not? And it always gives you the option of bypassing because edge cases, whatever, whatever. Um, but if you have the key here. Uh, it will check and it will not give you any warnings. But by default, it will warn you every time you have not accepted this. So it doesn't warn you for Dabnode Association packages, um, but it warns you for everything else unless you have tr decided to trust the key. So now that I know how to install a package, uh, how I cannot be fooled by its origin, uh, now I have a question for you is uh, how do updates work? Like Because often we update the code, we update a lot of stuff, the backend, sometimes change the API, endpoints and everything. So how do you keep up with this? Uh, how does that work? And you're nailing it with the questions. This is amazing. Um, so, so because um, this is in a smart contract repository, um, uh, the DAP, the DAP node knows the DAP manager, which is the core of uh, like kind of like the heart of DAP node, is constantly checking whether you have updated the smart contract. When you check if there's a new version, when you update the, the repository, the smart contract, you say like, hey, there's a new version for this. You can see basically these sort of transactions. Mm -hmm. We're looking at the optimism package. These sort of transactions update the IPFS hash. So it's like, hey. For optimism.public.dabno.eth, instead of pointing to this IPFS hash, which is version 0 0.12, and here you will find the content, now point 
here, point at this hash, and this is the version number, right? So because you have an IPFS node and you're reading the, the smart contract all the time, the, the DAP manager can go like, hey, there's a new update. I'm just going to download and install it myself. And you can choose to activate auto updates if you want. So there's a lot of people who might not trust the auto updates because you know things break with new things, whatever, whatever. Um, you can always deactivate them. But um, the most comfortable thing is that actually it requires no maintenance at all to have your node updated. This is something that you don't find in any other system as far as I know. You always need to update, you need DevOps work. And just to put an example, um, if, you're, if you're running an Ethereum validator, for example, in the last 12 months, there was 16 updates for the geth, for the main um, execution layer node. And there was 20 updates for Prism, which is a consensus layer, the consensus layer of the, of the Ethereum node. Now you need both the execution and consensus in order to have a full node. Um, if you spend just two hours for each uh, updating, whatever, uh, per each update, that's 72 hours a year that you waste. In here, you don't even look at it. You can be on holidays and it'll update and it'll keep running fantastically. But this is true. Why can we afford to do this? Because we are at a scale. We're, ser we're serving a big public. So with us testing it as the association, we test it. If it works, we push it. Because the key is trusted, because you trust the, the owner of the package um, and you've decided to trust it, then it will auto-update from somebody that you already trust. It's, it's, it's really interesting because we, we, when we were preparing this session with Polto yesterday, we had a discussion about, you know, like, uh, I'm not very technical, so even to set up a machine to set it all up is already a little bit of an effort, right? And he told me something that I think is really worth mentioning that I think is fair. Uh, he said, it's the end of the dream of decentralization. Now it's the beginning of the effort of decentralization. Uh, everyone is going to have to contribute wow. to decentralization, and you guys are actually making it like easy enough that the effort is uh, manageable. So I think it's uh, wow, it's really impressive. Like uh, it's really cool. Um, one more question though that I have, like just popping up, is um, if something breaks for some reason and my node is not validating anymore, uh, do I have an alert message or something? Uh, do am I aware, or do I have to come and check? Um, so this is a this is a really good question. There's there's a um, there's a, a fundamental problem of having your own server. Doing is that the monitoring that you do on this server is hosted in these servers. So when when you're actually you have the the DAP node monitoring service. Um, which you can configure to give you alerts on any okay. arbitrary alerts. You can configure yeah. this to send you to send you emails on like notifications, alert rules, notification channels. Um, you can configure this to send you alerts when you find uh, when you find particular uh, particular data that you're monitoring. But okay. what happens if your DAP node is down? When your yeah. DAP node is down, yeah. if the DAP node is offline for some reason. Who's going to send you the alerts? This is happening within the server, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so this is this is kind of like the conundrum. Um, we're kind of thinking of offering like an extra service, always optional, um, of like monitoring your DAP node. Um, but it's a tricky thing because then that means that now we have to maintain, um, like we have to see who is running DAP nodes. And that's actually something that we're very proud of, the fact that we don't know who's running DAP nodes. We're, we're very yeah. proud of this. And maybe if it's an optional service, um, it could make sense if, if, you, if you find it critical. But if you're validating on Ethereum, for example, you can use uh, beaconche.in, um, the website that will send you alerts when you miss an attestation or, uh, or a block proposal. So you can use these other services. You can monitor your validators through other other means and receive um, receive alerts through other means. Okay, that's cool. So so Balto asked the question in the chat. Uh, maybe it's even a suggestion. 
He said, maybe mm -hmm. as you already have a cluster of IPFS nodes, you could allow to create <coughs> clusters of DMS. Not to be confused with DMT, but like, I don't know what DMS is actually, but <laughs> maybe you know. Oh, that's the that's the DAP node monitoring service. This is what oh, we're yeah. showing <laughs> right now in the, sc in the screen, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, yep, yep. So, yeah, so we that's actually like, yeah, we've been talking about uh, DAP node federations, right? Um, where you actually connect to, you can create a small federation of different nodes with some of your friends. And you create sort of like common endpoints for 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 it is. So, for example, if I want an Alephium node, um, I get together with four people that have an Alephium node, and we uh, we sort of like have this shared endpoint. And if I am down, then I can go to my other friends uh, who who is up, and then we can have like sort of like share the. Um, like share the access to nodes, etc. For monitoring, we don't have any design uh, as of now. Um, thought of this, but yet, yeah, but absolutely yes. Uh, cluster D a DMS cluster or a Grafana data sharing or monitoring service um, shared. It's a bit like in like maybe in like in BitTorrent, you know, when the the torrent starts to find seeders and leeches, we have the system like this too. Uh, so Cheng is asking, would you like to support DAP packages, not only infrastructures? Yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. This is such a good question. Um, one of the one of the things that happened lately was, for example, that we got we got uh, one of the staples of privacy. As you can see, I'm I'm very privacy focused. Um, uh, one of the staples of privacy was Tornado Cash. And it got banned, and some people, well, everybody that had used this uh, got um, got sanctioned. And um, then a, a lot of the services on Ethereum started like banning people that had used Tornado Cash from using their service. Um, <clears throat> and that was done at a because you cannot censor smart contracts, or at least you would have to like update, upgrade the smart contract, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So if it's a lot harder. They did this at uh, a DAP level, and this DAP was a web UI, right? Um, so we started offering uh, ways of uh, of publishing um, the centralized websites. Let me see if I can find here. I don't have it here. I don't have it in this DAP notes. Nope, I don't. But uh, Here we go. Oh, not the data manager. Sorry, I think we still have it in here. It's not published in, not in the public or anything, but it's kind of like a little bit of a secret. Um, but we have a package that allows you to deploy a repository, a GitHub repository on like on IPFS. Build it locally. Build this front end locally in your machine and deploy it and start serving it to you, so you can. Serve your own DAP, your own interface to interact with smart contracts directly from your own DAP nodes. That's really cool. Uh, da, 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 the centralized port on. Maybe it's not here. Maybe it's in Edu's repository. Edu, Edu is the another founder of DAP nodes um, and an absolute genius. So maybe we can find him here. Um, I can send it to you. Um, cool, cool. In the later in the send it here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many? How many are in the team? How many people? Ah, how many people? Um, we are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, uh, seven people. And admin, maybe with admin would be would be like eight people. Yeah, well, that's cool. Thank you. That's a very impressive work for a small team. And I guess you're completely decentralized, right? Everywhere yeah. around the planet. <laughs> yeah. So unfilterable, yeah. unseizable. Uh, so I maybe I didn't say it earlier. If you guys have questions, you can write them in the chat that you can find in the upper right. Um, part of the screen. Um, 
we're welcome to have more questions. Uh, do you have questions for Alifion? Because you, you, you must, um, Lansky, you must see a lot of new projects, right? Like when you, you, you must commonly interact with a lot of projects. So, yeah, if you have questions, like, we'd love to take them too. You have everyone here. Yeah. So that's yeah. So I actually have a lot of questions on uh, on Alephium. Um Mainly, like, what is your like? What would be your contest or like your your response to the recent anti proof of work push? Um, oh, the the you mean this constant, recurrent, often uh, point about energy, right? Yes, exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. So we first, like, by design, uh, the design of the proof of work um, consensus algorithm we have, the mechanism is called proof of less work. I don't know if you've heard of that. Uh huh. Um, because we, uh, we actually uh, have a, the, it works like this like, it's regular pr proof of work until some point where the hash rate is enough. And at that point, uh, you start to do coin burning to increase the cost, but not oh. increase the spend. And this is progressive up to a point where you get nowhere more. So the energy used is, is capped at a certain point. And uh, all things being equal, uh, it should be something around 90% less energy consumption than Bitcoin uh, for the same type of security and the same type of cost right. to the miner deployed differently. So this is Excellent. something we have uh, kind of built in, but we still believe that proof of work, at least for the short term, uh, is the best way to ensure the future is open, which is why it is our uh, mechanism, the, the mechanism with which we work today. But you know, who knows, like maybe 10 years down the line, Ethereum and others have proven that it works well in proof of stake and that we can be confident that it resists to capture and censorship. And and then maybe we can evolve. Where everything is built to be evolvable, one way or another. What's the what's the algorithm? Um, that's the, the the hashing algorithm. It's Blake three. Oh, that's so. Wait a minute, Blake three. That means that I can use my RX seven uh, RX five eighty. No. Okay, so I have like, a couple I'm, of. I so had to answer okay. that question. <laughs> Maybe Paul will get it. <laughs> you have to <laughs> okay, it's a it's a couple of gra it was a couple of graphic cards. Is it a, is it ASIC mining or or GP or uh, GPU mining? GPU mining works well. Uh, Ooh, so well, yeah. We, CGA. Uh, we are not ASIC resistant by design, actually. We don't believe uh -huh. that it has a real protection over the long term. But the uh, FPGA is coming in now. Uh, little okay. Bit. Okay. So I, I still have some I still have some some traction to use my uh, my my GPU. Okay, that's yeah. good. That's you good. will uh, you will find that our Discord is actually a very welcoming place, full of advice Fantastic. and nice people to answer your questions on mining subjects. Uh, because um, we've been we have a, a I don't know, seven or eight mining pools. Uh, there's different implementations for mining. It's it's a We've been uh, growing much faster than we expected in the beginning on this. Nice. Very happy. And, and uh, one last question for you guys. Um, what is the most used app that uh, that, that you have in LFM? The most used app? For now, uh, uh, for now we, for, we are on the cusp of announcing actually tomorrow that we're going to ah. have a very important next tech network, talk. network upgrade <laughs> very soon. That's going to make, make it much, much, much easier for everyone to build stuff on top of Alephium. Uh, so we, uh, we have a couple of wallets. Uh, we have the desktop wallet, which is awesome. I don't know if you've tried it. It's beautiful. Uh, the mobile wallet is I coming have. very fast. Ours, our mobile wallet. Uh, but like others are building uh, NFT platforms. Uh, and other apps that we can't talk yet about. Um, but we are expecting a big push uh, for the ecosystem dApps uh, in the beginning of next year. 
Uh, does do you Cheng? Do you want to add something? You can unmute yourself and uh, just talk if you would want. be would be happy to have uh, to 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 have like those apps self hosted in in Dabno and stuff. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, I want to add a little bit. Uh, so we are a brand new layer one blockchain. We it took us. We started um, like, oh, at least four years ago. It took us a lot of time to build just the blockchain. You know, it's a lot of work to to build a, a new brand new blockchain from scratch. Uh, just think about how much time it takes for for each one to build the the proof of staking uh, algorithm. So it's the same for us. We we like uh, study in 2018 uh, and uh, took four years to to deliver the the sharding algorithm. Actually, right now still like the the sharding is not available on Ethereum, right? It's still uh, kind of research in progress. So we we deliver it, uh, but it took us most of the time. And now we are focused on building the uh, infrastructure and the, the uh, SDK. Uh, and we have quite some demo the apps right now but we need to have the the next uh next uh, network upgrade to enable all of this so still a little bit of time to have some real the apps on the blockchain but it's, it's coming well let, let us know and they'll be on that note as well cool uh, uh, lansky i i i promised you that we would uh, be tight with the timing so we're almost exactly one hour in. Uh, so if anyone else has a question, now is the time. Otherwise, other than that, um, I'm very happy to thank you a lot for this presentation. It was really enlightening, very clear. Uh, I, for one, want to run a node at some point, so I'm going to have to go through the motions. Uh, it was, uh, I think we share a lot, like Adapt Node and Adalithium in the ethos of decentralization, um, trusting uh, that uh, a decentralized network is a, is a better solution and a, be a decentralized infrastructure is really important. Uh, about that, I want to circle back because Polto answered, we don't know the number of nodes, we just know the number of different IPs that connect. And, and like at some point it was, I think, 200, 300, some, somewhere in that um in that uh in that uh, area um the so Ilias is adding that the mobile wallet will also be able to connect to your own dap node so the, the 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 next iteration of the wallet will be able to connect directly nice yeah this is really easy to connect it's really easy to connect your phone to your dap node as well to create a vpn tunnel i didn't show this part but it's if you have wireguard or open vpn you just have to download this little app and then you can connect directly to um to from from your server to your phone no matter where in the world you are you can you can connect to your node and to your rpc endpoints to your own nodes etc cetera, etc cetera. So yeah, so listen, like it was awesome. Like, thanks, M. Garcetti, for I don't know what you sent. I don't want to click on the link. Oh, maybe I'll just click. Oh, desktop wallet to my dark node. Perfect. We're gonna use all that because we actually want to produce some kind of a tutorial to help people to connect to that node and install the packages. Uh, but thanks a lot, guys. It's been a, it's been a blast working with you. It's been a blast preparing this and having this interaction. Uh, you're an amazing presenter. Uh, you probably know that, but it's a, it's a lot of pleasure for the people Thank here. You. Nobody, nobody yeah. left, basically. so it's like it's like uh, thanks a lot. <laughs> yeah, no, and thanks then, to you guys. You you guys are a super solid community. It the it shows. You're very very um, professional. Super good team. So thank you very much. And uh, yeah, let's get more things. Let's yeah. Get, let's get the dance. And then the whole one node at a time, you know, like the effort of decentralization. That's the, I will get, I will keep that from Polito. Thanks, guys. Excellent. Uh, yeah. Like, su super, super on you as well, Vlad, on, on your emceeing skills. And the questions were really on point. It's really hard to get people going so straight, like every question, like a nail. It was really good. That's when we, that, that's credit also goes to Polto. 
Thanks. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. Bye. Have an excellent night. Cheers. See ya.